Hello, this is LJ Bothell with Microsoft Excel and a short video on pivot charts. Pivot charts are built from pivot tables and essentially will work the same way as regular charts and graphs do in Excel, but they're based on being made for a pivot table, which is a summary table based on a larger table of information. So the larger table we have in here is in a sales tab and it's a whole bunch of information of regions, sales reps, products, categories, there's subcategories, sales made from those. I have not included the quantity in here. And then the order date. And this is for, it looks like, the final quarter of 2022. And then we have a pivot table based on the regions and then the categories of products sold in that region. And this table looks kind of funny because it's not, it's not totally collapsed or not collapsed, but it's easy to open up collapsed areas so that you can see everything that you need to see. Oops, there we go. And of course I, there we go. The second thing is I'm not seeing the pivot table uh, panel over here. So I'm going to make sure to click on the pivot table, go into the pivot table, analyze ribbon, go to show, and then click on the field list to open it up. So if I need this when I am making or adjusting pivot charts, I can have it with me. So a pivot chart is basically the same type of thing as a standard Excel chart. It's a way of creating a visual look at data that's in a table. A pivot chart goes with a pivot table, and the pivot table is a summary table of a big table. Whereas in Excel, you can also and often will make charts and graphs of a full size table like this one. But the process of making them is very similar and the process of editing the final charts is very similar. So in here, I'm going to make sure I've clicked inside of my pivot table. Then I'm going to come over to insert and look at the charts group. And right at the right of the charts group is the pivot chart. So I'm going to click this and see what options we have based on the data that appears in Excel's opinion here. Now, one thing we'll discover when we get to datas and charts for general tables is that there will be recommended charts and then there will be a tab like this one for all charts. In this particular case, we're simply getting to choose from all charts. That doesn't mean that all charts are available for a certain type of table, and it does not mean that all charts that appear to be available for a certain type of pivot table are particularly good charts for said table. So what we're going to do is just take a click through here. Templates, so we're going to stay out of that. But according to this, we could make a column chart from this information. I'm not sure how well we can hover over it. We get a little bit of a look of what we would see. We would see the um, sales data, the, the values in the right hand, excuse me, the left hand column. Then at the bottom, we would see all of the categories. But we also would have those squished together with each of the regions. And this is not necessarily a good representation of how we'd want to visualize this data. Line would do the same kind of thing. You can see by looking at this kind of enlarged um, thumbnail of it, that again, you would see things broken down by the types of categories and then by the regions, but things get squished together. Now, certainly we can make a really big graph, but this again may not be the best thing to tell us anything we really need to know. Pi. Oh, this is really interesting. See, there's so many pieces and parts to this. The pie chart is usually best when you're only doing something simple like the regions and the costs, or only the ingredients and the costs for that, or only the categories and the costs. But if you're trying to look at two levels of things like this particular pivot table is, pie chart's not going to work. A bar is an awful lot like the column, here again, you can see that for two levels of stuff, you could do it, but it's very busy. It doesn't really do all that much. Let's see if there's anything down here that looks like it would be good for something like this. Some of these, there's nothing that comes up. 
and others, when you do see them, they're just very, very busy. So the thing is that just because there's a potential for a chart, it doesn't mean that necessarily the chart will work for the table you have. So in this case, really one of the best ones is potentially either the line or the column or the bar, but it's pretty busy. So let's just go ahead and, and do a column one and see what we end up with. When you get in, you'll have choices between types of columns, whether they're three-dimensional, whether they're stacked charts, whether they're clustered. We're going to do a just standard clustered column. We'll click this. Oh, sorry, now I need to bring this up so I can click OK, and we'll see what we get. Now, for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the pivot chart um, fields thing uh, <laughs> panel, and I'm going to widen this table so that maybe we could see things a little better. But see, this, this isn't really a great representation because in a way, the table itself does the summarizing you need, and this visual doesn't really help us. See what I mean? You know, we can look at West and we can see these bars, but really all we have are all these bars all over the place. So this, this isn't that great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. Then next thing I'm going to do is come back up here and go and show this. And what I want to do is I want to choose something specific that I want to see. So right now I'd like to look at just the regional sales. So I'm going to turn off category and we'll see this. Then I'm going to just move this so that it's really thin over here. I'm going to make sure I'm in the pivot table, click insert, pivot chart. And now what we get is something that if we choose to do a bar chart or a column chart, it makes more sense. We're looking at one quality against one value system. So the values being the sales and then the quality being the, um, the, the different regions. So that makes sense. We could do the same thing with the line chart that would just do it in this particular way instead of in a column format. The bar chart would do it in a bar format instead of a column format. And a pie chart may or may not be particularly good for this simply because there's so many regions and it could be hard to, you know, evaluate this many pieces, even though it's pretty, <laughs> right? Okay, right. So we're going to, you know, then we could take a look and we can see other options down here. But again, some of these either don't particularly make much sense or they don't appear to be available for the kind of data we have. So again, we'll just do a column chart. So a clustered column is where you can see the columns in different heights. And then a stacked column is where you can see the columns going all the way up. But if there is more than one quality of information in there, there would be different colors. We're just going to stick with a standard um, clustered column. And we'll use 3D because it's a little bit more graphically representative. And here we go. We get this chart. The chart is for the sum of sales. This can this is actually a button that you can change, and so is region. So the reason why this is a pivot chart is because you can actually pivot the chart the same way as you could pivot the table. And if I make changes to the table, the chart will likely change. But right now what we're seeing here is that, you know, the highest price that anyone uh, or highest sales have been $361, which is why up here the values go up to $400. And then you can see these by each of the different regions. Now, if I wanted to come in here and change this, I can weed out certain regions. So say I only want to see the West regions. And we'll consider Island a West one. Then not only will the pivot chart change, but the pivot table will change too. And then I can come back over here to the pivot table and I can go ahead and clear the filter and this fixes this. Now, if I come over to this table and I decide, no, you know, I would like to have an additional chart. Well, what I'm going to do is I want to create a different chart. And in this case, I want the chart to be of the categories and not the region. Now, what happens here is, of course, the existing chart changes. That's okay. You know, you would probably want to have a separate different table, a different pivot table, one for each chart. We're using the same one, though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and delete this particular chart, click on this table, and then I'm going to come back up to Insert, and then we'll come back over to Pivot Chart, and we'll take a look at Pi. 
this is a little bit better use of a pie chart because there's fewer segments and they can stand out a little bit better. So in this case, I'll make this pie chart. And then again, we can see that we've got some of sales and we could change it from category to something else. Like we could choose that we only want to see category food and ingredients and then see this. Or we can go ahead and we can clear the filter. Now, one thing that's missing here is one, that we have a title of this chart. We had a title for the other chart and it's like, well, total of what? So in this case, you can actually change this information. You say total sales by category, right? And then the other thing is, okay, we have these nice colors, but what do they mean? So one thing you could do is you can right click and you can add data labels. And there should be a little flyout box when you click this arrow. You can either apply data labels or data callouts. Labels would just be the numbers and the callouts would look a little bit like this. So you can do one of two things. But this is a basic pivot chart from a basic pivot table. So I hope this information was helpful.